Hey, this is Bug Powder Dust. Thank you for joining me for part two of the Absolute Beginner's Guide to RimWorld. So if you haven't checked out part one, uh, probably better that you do. So uh, please check the link uh, in the description and you'll be able to uh, catch up with what you missed uh, yesterday, uh, which is when the part one of this video was released. So we've got our three intrepid colonists. We've got uh, a basic shelter up. We've got some beds. We've got some somewhere to eat. We have a refrigerated section, which means now, because we have power, we can start to uh, install a cooker. We can start hunting some animals and actually making some proper meals rather than living off these packaged survival meals, which don't taste good to anybody. So without further ado, what we're going to do is we need to sort of hunt some animals. Now, the obvious choice would be these muffalo down here. The trouble with muffalo is that they have a chance to attack you. Um, it's only 2% if you uh, anger them while hunting. Now, muffalos early on are no joke because the amount of weapons you've got, you've got you know, literally a shot, uh, sorry, a rifle, you've got a pistol, you've got a knife. So that is nothing to be taken lightly. So to have a look at what animals can be hunted, which don't really pose any danger, at least early on, you click on the wildlife tab and you can see here, this is a list of all the animals that can be hunted that are on this map. So for instance, say you want to have a look at the, I don't know, boomalope, you click it and it shows you where the boomalope is. Now, the other thing that this... Uh, this tab shows you is the uh, sex and um, if they're an adult or how, how big they are the bigger the circle the uh, the more grown up they are the purpose of the hunting doesn't really matter too much this is more around if you want to try and tame them uh, and, and mate the animals but we'll, we'll uh, maybe cover that on another one the percentage chance here basically is the chance that this creature will seek revenge upon being harmed by an attacker at rifle range as it states if the attacker is closer then you stand uh, more chance of the animal attacking you. So the best thing to do is hunt with a rifle. And as I mentioned in yesterday's episode, you don't hunt with a melee weapon, because as it says here, uh, if attacked at very close range, the chance is three times greater. So in this instance, you know, this instance would be 6%. In this, um, it would be, well, 105%. They're almost, uh, well, they are going to attack you if you melee attack them, you know, these particular wolves. So we're going to probably go with the gazelles, I think, to start off with. So they're really far away. Um, but the rifle has a reasonable range and we only need just a couple of carcasses just to start off with to um, give you the idea. And I've actually just spotted some more food down here which is wasn't hauled previously. So if you see anything like that you can always get your, your colonist to haul. I mean there's no, doesn't seem to be any nearer 0% uh, chance of attacking wildlife. I mean you've got the small ones but let's go with the gazelle for now. Let's go for one of the nearer ones. So let's say we'll attack these two. So I've highlighted them. Uh, and clicked hunt or you can click them individually it's entirely up to you so that being done what's going to happen now is where are these guys go ah they're hauling the package survival meals okay so you notice here that the um uh fringer although um i designated the animal to be hunted he was already doing this task of hauling even though it's a lower priority if i want to change that i just draft him and then undraft him and now he'll go and hunt because he's uh, priority has been reset. So while we're here, I'll actually explain what the draft tool does. So you select a colonist. Now, if you haven't got them drafted, they will just basically move and they'll do tasks uh, of their own accord according to their work priority schedule here. If you draft them, then they will start to do, uh, well, basically you manually control them. So what I'll do is I'll just let them, I'll let this guy haul the meals back. Let's watch this guy hunt. Now, bearing in mind I've got it at three speed, if I put it on one speed, you'll see basically how slow it is. So, he's not a bad shot, really. And and if you care to, you can highlight the animal that's been injured, click on health, and you can see exactly what's been hit. So, he's been hit in the body, and this um, little blood icon means that he's actively bleeding. The bigger the icon, uh, the more blood loss. And it says at the bottom how soon he'll die. If it's only a little small... Um, a small icon sometimes the they actually manage to heal themselves um, and they stop bleeding so for instance here i could stop firing he would he would bleed out basically and die and we'll come back and collect the body but you know life's too short um fringer has basically been overridden by the need to rest so he's going to go and lie down again because bed rest comes before hunting so he's gonna go and lie down because it's night time Contreras is just finishing off taking the last of the meals to be hauled in there, and he's going to have a lie down as well. So while that's happening, what we're going to do is we're going to um, set up the kitchen. Um, so the kitchen is where you'll cook the meals 
before you plonk them into the fridge. So in this instance, it's actually a good idea to have the kitchen near to your refrigerated unit. Uh, it just cuts down on the amount of travel time. What it's not a good idea to do is have your butcher area in the same uh, room as the kitchen because the butcher, uh, the butchering table will um, cause a lot of mess in the kitchen. And if you cook in a dirty kitchen, you stand the chance of getting food poisoning. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a, a small room for butchering, say, I don't know, something like this. We'll stick in a door there and then we'll create the kitchen in here. Then we'll create a wooden door there so they can put things straight into the refrigerated unit here. What we're also going to do is we're going to make uh, put in a nice floor, wooden floor, wooden floor. Now the reason I'm doing this is because um, the colonists do care about the environment that they're in. So if you go to the needs, you'll see here that they they have a sliding scale of how hungry they are, what their mood is, how much rest they're getting. Now if it's green, it means that they're actively receiving that uh, that benefit. How much recreation uh, need they have? They need to have fun basically. Um, how much beauty that they're surrounded by uh, and how much comfort they are currently getting. So we can see here that the green numbers are, they're, they're, they're happy with these things. Uh, the red numbers are things like disturbed sleep. So for instance, disturbed sleep is caused if you have people sharing a room and somebody walks in while the other two are sleeping. Slept in the heat, self-explanatory. It's not actually that hot in here, but I think that this is from yesterday when we had the campfire going. And the barrack is considered to be awful. So how do you know if they're sleeping in the awful barracks and how do you know what they consider to be nice or not. Well, that's actually quite easy. So down here, you've got a room stats display. So there's two items here, which I'll show you. The first one is a room stats display. You tick that on, and if you hover over it, it says, right, this room uh, is, it's awful. It's impressiveness is awful. It's impoverished. It's average size. It's ugly and it's dirty. Now it's considered to be ugly because of the, the floor. Okay, so the floor is just earth. Um, so you could possibly consider putting in a floor of some sort. I don't tend to bother early on in the uh, refrigerated area because they spend so little time in there that the, 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 the negative effects of that are quite small. So if you're looking here, for instance, the um, beauty is, is also ugly. That's probably because it's dirty, um, but the floor itself is actually giving positives um, or, or at best, at worst, sorry, neg uh, neutral. So let's take a look at the floor. So we can see now what this is doing, and this is a di slightly different view of what they find pleasing or not. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if you um, go in here, you'll see where the dirt is. You can see minus 14, minus 14. So that's quite a big debuff. However, the floor is giving them all a plus one uh, beauty modifier. Um, if you go in here, again, the floor is minus one. Um, they will get beauty from different things in different ways. So, I mean, for instance, this, this big chugging generator is minus 20, for instance, stone blocks is minus 13. But they will find things that they do find pleasing. So if you find, I don't know, flowers, for instance. So we see here, it's a nice bush, dandelions here, sorry. It gives them a three, a plus three. So you can um, put plant pots inside uh, early on to basically boost, boost the beauty of a room. Um, how, you know, how much you wanted to do in this area is entirely up to you. Um, but just keep an eye on, on how the colonists are feeling. What, what you can do later on when you get spare time and maybe the uh, spare people do it, is you can actually create works of art. So if you take a look at a colonist's um, uh, was their bio, sorry, you can see that they all have a skill at art uh, of a certain level. So he can't, she can't do art at all. He's not very good at it. But Ilarion, by the looks of it, is quite, actually quite good at making art. So you can actually make statues and you can actually sell those to traders or you can put them in the rooms and it buffs up the beauty of a room. So as I said, just be aware of that. I don't want to spend too long on that, but uh, but you should get the idea. Right, so we're going to do those when they wake up. Now let's expand those. We've got 45 wood. We're going to need more wood in order to create all this. So let's uh, designate some trees to be cut. There you go. So they'll they'll have a breakfast and then they'll start to build and they'll start to uh, to eat. Now the plan is basically once we've got the food supply sorted and we're starting to get meals and you know stuff in the fridge, we now need to start the the, the research up. Now researching is is quite a, quite intensive in terms of it just ties somebody up all day, but having batteries is actually really quite useful. Maybe it's not top priority necessarily straight away, but it's certainly something to bear in mind. So let's let's just see how we get on. So wait until they finish doing this. But under the production tab. You've got a butcher table and you've got an electric stove or a fuel stove. 
So a fuel stove you could um, you could use, uh, you, know, you could fuel it with wood if you want to, but honestly we've got power now so there's not a lot of point. So we'll crack on with our electric stove and we'll put it, uh, put it there. Now we'll create a stall with there as well. Again, the placement of this is not ideal. I should have thought this through, but uh, it's, it's okay for now. The stall is kind of blocking the way, but it, it's, it's okay. It is what it is. Let's just tidy this up. Floor there as well. So, have we got enough wood for this? Yep, looks like we have. We're also going to create a butcher table as well. And we're going to put a stall down there too. So basically, when they're at the station, they get the comfort from being able to sit down at a stall. Okay, great. So what we now need to do is run Power Conduit along here. Now you don't have to run it actually completely up to the unit that needs power. Um, you can actually, you'll get power. So for instance here, it's stretching it out from this section here. And you, you'll see what I'm talking about. So this is basically grabbing power from here. Um, so you don't want it to grab it from here but you want to grab this from, say, another power source, for instance, you can actually click on the uh, the kitchen and say reconnect. And what it will do, you see the little smoke there, you will, you, it will reconnect it to uh, an alternative power uh, line. In this instance, it's kind of pointless to do this, but there are instances where you might want this to happen. So, for instance, say you have, um, you can install switches with power. So if you go to power, uh, you've got a power switch. So say you have a gun turret outside, you want to activate it using a, a, a switch. It might be attached to another um, power line. You can, you can switch it over to the power line you want to, controlled by the switch by clicking the uh, reconnect button. Right, so the uh, electric stove is connected up. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on add bill once we've selected the stove. Cook me a simple meal. Now, how many times do I want to do this? I can either just make five simple meals, okay? And that's just a one-off. This is just a simple cook me five meals and then stop. However, with the cooking, you don't want to do this because they're going to be eating all the time. So the rule of thumb is, for me anyway, three meals a day for each of your colonists. So three, six. So let, let's let's say ten. So you can click on this. Do until you have X. So basically what we're saying here is cook until you have ten. As soon as we have nine, the person who's assigned to cooking will cook another one. Okay. If you want to have more control over it, you can click on details and there's lots of choice here. Um, you can either suspend it, so say stop this temporarily. Um, this is the do until you have X, pause when satisfied. Um, you know, so take to best stockpile, Where, where's it going to be put? So currently it's taken to the best stockpile or you can actually specify a particular stockpile for it to go to. So if you have two, two uh, cooks, for instance, with, with two um, electric stoves, you can then have them supplying different stockpiles, which can be quite useful. You can specify uh, the worker skill that you want allowed to cook on this on this particular stove. So you can drag it up and down. So only people with skills 10 to 20, or we don't mind, uh, this is a very early game. You can also specify uh, what you want to go into the meal. Um, it takes 10 units uh, generally. Is it 10 units? I think it's 10 units of uh, meat or veg. Uh, you can mix them both, but say you have a surplus of, I don't know, meat. You can actually specify, well, let's run down our surplus of meat for now. Um, and, it, and you just untick vegetarian, for instance. But we'll we'll see that in action shortly. So it's saying basically cook ten simple meals. Now the person who's going to do that is the person who has uh, who's been assigned to cooking. So in our case, it's Fringer. So Fringer will cook over hunting. So um, is it she? I think it's a she. Yes. So she will cook ten meals, and then she'll go hunting because that's the priority it's in. If there's no hunting to do, then it goes on to the next jobs that she has available. Okay, that's that. So the butcher's table is going to be made, but it looks like we've run out of wood. So let me just um, get them to chop more wood down. Now I'm just doing this, um, just chop, old, chop down any old trees, but you want to have an eye to security at all times. So honestly, if they're going to be coming from this direction, this is going to be, be the sort of choke point we want to force them through. We don't have any trees that they can use as cover. So really I want to try and use the trees up from around here, even though we're right quite open everywhere else but but that's still like the long-term plan anyway okay so we've got the butcher's table now so again we're going to create a bill for the butcher's table going to add a bill we're going to say butcher creature and again it's the same thing do i want to do it just a few times now in this instance the butcher table you want to butcher animals on an ongoing basis so you just say do forever you can specify um, here which you do and don't want to butcher so we're not butchering humans in this particular instance we're just butchering 
animals. You can, of course, butcher humans, and you can, you know, sell the skin or use the skin to make hats or <laughs> whatever you whatever you like to do. In this instance, in this tutorial, we're just going to be uh, butchering animal corpses. So we appear to be good to go now. One last thing is that colonists liked, like light, obviously, because they're human, so we all like light, and we would like to see what we're doing. If you hover over this area, in the bottom left-hand corner, down here, you can see that it's dark, right? There's 0% light, so these people are going to actually cook and butcher very badly, because there's no light source. So what we're going to do, we're going to put in, um, under the furniture tab, some standing lamps. No, no one there. So standing lamps, as we can see, they need 20 steel. Uh, we have enough steel for now. So they're going to chop trees and they're going to start constructing. And Fringer is going to go up here. Now you'll notice that this animal, the one we shot at yesterday, I think it's the one we shot at yesterday. Oh, no, that's a different one. I was about to say, I thought it bled out. Is that? Yeah, this was the one we shot at yesterday. Um, he's, he's He basically bled out and now he's dead. Um, so we'll have to come and collect this one. But Fringe, what Fringe is doing now, she's butchering, you can see down here. So she's she's finished her hunting tasks, no more to hunt. So she's going to come down here, now she's going to start butchering at the butcher's table. As we can see. So, butchering creates um, meat and it creates leather. Plain leather by times 21. Now you can do lots of things with plain leather. You can uh, use it to, uh, to, to craft, basically. Craft clothes, craft uh, furniture. Uh, or you can sell it, it's entirely up to you. So what Fringe is going to do now is dump this into the refrigerated unit. If we, you see we've got 51 out of that one animal, which is, that's enough to make five meals. So if we click on this, we'll see that it's frozen and it won't spoil. So this is great. Now, what we're going to start doing is, um, let's have a look at uh, the work tab. Yeah, so Fringer is going to start cooking. I think she's, yeah, so she's just eating that for now. But now she'll start cooking because we have some raw ingredients. So she'll start doing that next. Now you may have noticed that uh, on the right hand side here, we have a visitor. Uh, let's have a look at the visitor. He's coming from the Red Meyer Union and their current goodwill to us is neutral. So if we just jump to the location, we can see that he's coming up to, uh, to have a chat with us. And that question mark means he has something to trade. So if you click on gear, we can see what he's got with him. So he's got some pemmican, which is um, basically it's it's good for uh, for traveling with. It doesn't go off very quickly, and we can make that as well. He's got some medicine. Uh, he's got some silver. Whether you trade with these guys or not, it's entirely up to you. It's all good. Now we have speaking of medicine, we have a stock of medicine here. But what you'll notice is that there's um, natural medicine growing around the map. So you've got wild hill root here, and it's ready to harvest. So this is a great way of getting medicine for free. Just click on harvest. These are 58% grown, so it's not ready to go yet, 30. Basically, the, the larger it is, the more uh, mature the plant is. And while we're on the subject, you'll see here that these are berry bushes. Um, and again, 83%, 81%. Um, these can be harvested, so click on harvest. And they, these make a, a quite a nice um, supplement to the food you grow on your farm here, and also the food you get from slaughtering animals. So just bear in mind, don't, don't ignore these, because in the winter, these will kind of disappear um, and they may grow back at a very slow rate. Okay, so we can hear some cooking going on. So Fringe is cooking, and we're now starting to, to create simple meals, which is absolutely fantastic. Cool, good stuff. Right, so let's take stock. We've got power, we've got uh, we've got food source, we've got uh, butchering, we've got, you know, everyone's relatively comfortable. So let's have a quick look at their needs and see what the problem is. So we've got uh, disturbed sleep. Okay, we can't do much about that. Slept in the cold. Yeah, okay, so it's, that's again, 18 degrees is not the warmest. Dull barrack and darkness. She's been in the dark for a while, um, but phew, have to man up, frankly. So what, what are we going to do next? We, I think at the stage now, we can actually start to do some research. See, what uh, this character's done is just harvested those berries uh, from up here where we marked it. Now, everything's a little bit small. Um, they're getting sort of cramped debuff. They, what we'd like to do ideally is, is create bedrooms for our colonists so they can actually all have a bedroom each. But also we need to create a prison area where we can um, basically capture uh, people and try and recruit them for our uh, colony, which is an important source of colonists when you first start. So you can do one of two things. You can either carry on expanding your building here or what you can do is you can actually uh, mine into the mountain so mining into the mountain has advantages and disadvantages. Advantages are um, 
obviously they're very strong self-contained uh, rooms very hard to tunnel into they're pre well protected however the downside of course is that it takes time to mine it's very easy to, to throw up a room or a building with wood or, or even with stones comparatively because um, mining just you have to mine out these these chunks of rock and it just takes time let me give you an example so say I want to build a a bedroom for a colonist so I'm going to build a door come in another one they're going to build um, let's let's do a corridor and then three by three okay actually that's not great let me let me get rid of that three by three let me start from here instead just don't want it to touch the edge there you go right so mining uh, unless we've got any people who are really really good at mining and it doesn't seem that we do um, this could take a while as you can see so you can see if you zoom right in you can see the the sort of hit points of that particular uh, mining area now every time you mine you create a chunk so this is marble now this can then be uh, worked into uh, stone now you notice here we've actually uncovered compacted steel so we're actually mining out metal now which is quite handy and you couldn't see that until you got to the square adjacent to it so it's worth bearing in mind that all this may look like boring old rock but actually it's not so most of it will be but some of it won't be so we've uncovered more rock it's very time consuming uh, but there's nothing much that that can be done about that okay what's next create a wall and I think we're gonna make some bedrooms now each bedroom is gonna be three by three so what you can do is you can actually plan it out so three by three three by three three by three so that gives them three bedrooms that they are good to go with so on that basis so what we're doing is we're building uh three bedrooms there you go and i'm going to put some doors in perfect so we're probably going to need 181 wood should be enough actually and then we're going to put some wooden flooring in as well but let's just uh let's speed it up a little bit so they're all sleeping now bearing in mind that so wood is great it's it's plentiful around the map and you can build with it very easily it's very quick to build with absolutely fantastic the only problem with wood is it's highly flammable so as soon as you can it's better to get the the, the wood to be replaced by uh, stone blocks so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build a stone cutters table um, i'm going to just accept the defaults of that so while, that, while that's being made let's have a look at production again there's lots of things that, that we can build here um, haven't been over many of them yet so you've got the sculptor's table which can you can build um, statues with but again i think that's kind of a slightly later game butcher table we've done already tailor bench here you can actually make clothes uh, this is critical um, if you uh, or once your clothes start running out of um, of not beauty quality uh, let me show you gear You'll see here that uh, he has flak pants and it's 100%. His synth red button down shirt is 90, I can't actually read that, but it's 90 something percent. When they get to 49%, they start getting debuffs from wearing clothes that are considered to be frayed. So you need to be able to, uh, to make some more. But that's not a problem that you're going to hit in this mode um, until a bit later on. So let's not worry about it too much right now. What we are going to do is we are going to build a stone research bench. Sorry, a stone research bench. A stone cutting table, even. And we're going to make sure this is inside as well. So we've got a warning about it. it's going to have a speed penalty if you're outdoors with this, but that's fine. And again, another door. So we've run out of wood, so let's cut some more wood. Again, I'd like to cut it from over here. So while we're waiting for, for this to, to happen, um, you might have noticed these steam geysers uh, on the ground so these are thermal vents now these can be used in order to create energy so if you go to power you'll notice we don't have uh, any thermal generators here but if you go to research you'll see that one of the power options is geothermal power and once you have this your power concerns go away for a while so this is very much worth aiming towards you basically place a geothermal power generator over this it's about four by four i think 
and it's yeah you, you connect, connect it up and and, th and then it uh, basically gives you loads of power certainly aim for this uh, it's it's very much worth having okay so we've had our first um, event it's uh, a mad tort a local tortoise has gone mad it will attack everything it sees so you jump to the location it's actually quite close okay so what we want to do is we don't want to get our guys to to be um, eaten by this tortoise or nibbled that should I say so we're, we're going to draft them all so you can do that either by selecting them all like this or by selecting them all at the top or by holding down a shift key and selecting them all now we're going to draft them which means they're ready to to fight and we're going to move them sort of over to here and it'll give them a little bit of a field of fire as the tortoise approaches probably from up here now where is this tortoise again it's over here here it is okay the tortoises aren't very slow So we'll, we'll see that, okay, so the rifle's firing first because if I click on, you click on the pawn and you click on the rifle and you can see the range of the rifle. This is very useful in combat. You can see what range your weapons have. So he started to fire. The pistol doesn't have such a large range, so he'll start to fire when the tortoise gets a little bit closer in. And the knife obviously is a knife, so that won't be firing anytime soon. So you'll see that the pistol will start to fire very, very soon. So the guy with the gun, lady with the gun, is not uh, doing so well at the moment. There we go. Pistol. That bounce off. <laughs> so you can see that, that early on when people's skills aren't particularly honed, um, there can be a lot of misses. So kill shot. Very good. Uh, got shot in the shell. Destroyed his stomach. Now, if you're interested in seeing, say you didn't catch this action, you were concentrating on something else, but you want to come back and see what happened, you can click on, say, Ilarion and look at the log, and it will break the log up into separate sections. In this instance, um, it says Hyeria, which is the name of the colony now, versus unaffiliated, which is basically the tortoise. It's not affiliated to, to any other um, uh, faction. So he basically he missed a couple of times. Whereas... Uh, this one, bolt action, it skipped, it missed, it pissed, and then this icon means it killed. So you can check back on the on the log if you didn't see what happened. Now, it's given it a do not um, touch uh, red cross. We can take that off, highlight these guys, take them off draft, and off they go. Fringer is going to basically collect the body and butcher it, because that's like a priority for her. Whereas Contreras is going off to, to cut these trees and carry on with creating the bedrooms. Okay, so one thing to bear in mind now is that, well, we've got bedroom or beds already. Do we have to build them again? Actually, no, you don't. And this is the nice thing. Most items, I say most, not all. You can just basically move them as you would in real life. So you can click on uninstall or reinstall at. What's the difference between these two? Uninstall means you're basically going to pack it up, you're going to box it up, and you're going to stick it in storage. Reinstall means pick it up and just basically move it into your new area. So let me give you an example. I want to reinstall this bed in this room. And you can turn it around by pressing down, pressing in the middle mouse button. Okay, so that's going to be moved there. Similarly, I want to reinstall this here, and this one I want to reinstall here. So anybody could, I think it's the hauling task will move these beds into these new areas. So he's moving bed one. Now the other thing that you can do is I want this um, this area here, this section here, to be completed post haste because I want, I want this bedroom completed. I have the resources down here but they're not getting to that. They might decide they want to do this section here. So I'm going to tell him do this by selecting the, the, the pawn, right clicking and say prioritize this particular job. This is quite handy for a temporary override. So that's done. This bedroom's now done. Um, so now we want the door to be completed. So again, he's not doing what I want him to. Uh, he's doing this. He, I want him to do this. So, but this guy, Contreras, he's now hauling the wood to the wooden door, which is it must be this one here because there's no other doors waiting to be completed. So that's fine. So the beds are in place. So Contreras has gone to sleep, but because he hasn't got the door on, it's still considered to be outdoors. So if you look over here, and I hover over here, it's still showing outdoors. So he's going to get a buff for that. Uh, sorry, a debuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell Ilarion, before you go to sleep, right-click and prioritise constructing the door. 
OK. So now you'll see it shows uh, unroofed because we haven't finished uh, uh, doing the roof on his on his uh, on his room. This is probably a good time to show you. Well, how do I know that the roof isn't on it? Well, down here it says unroofed if you hover over, hover over it, as you can see. Or you can go to zone, build roof area. Sorry, remove. Yeah, let's go back to that. Remove roof area. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so maybe you can't see it that way. Okay, fine. I thought that was a thing. So you'll see if I hover over these, it says indoors, and over here it says unroofed. It means six tiles. So six of these tiles are unroofed, um, and that's that. That's fine. So he'll get a small debuff for sleeping outside, uh, somewhere, but may, maybe not just yet. Um, but that's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. Now, one thing I noticed is when they wanted to move from here to here, they had to go around because this piece of rock is blocking the way. So I'm just going to click on mine so they can get access all the way around their, their building here. And we'll probably mine this out in due course anyway. Right, wooden stone cutters table. Why is this a priority? Well, having the ability to build stone columns, stone walls, actually makes your defences a little bit more um, secure. The idea really is to basically build... A wall maybe around here uh, not not necessarily this wide straight away but certainly we can start making a, a small fortification so basically you so we can funnel raiders coming from certain direction being attacked from all sides isn't very pleasant so you can start to to secure your colonists so stone cutters table early on is probably a good idea so again you click on the stone cutters table you click on bills and you can similarly to to all the other things where you create you can add a bill and you can say make a particular type of stone blocks or make any stone blocks. And again, I'll do that forever. If I want to stop the person from making stone blocks, I'll just click on suspend and stop doing it. Then we can come back to it. So who have we got who can make stone blocks? So this comes under crafting. I think it's, it's under crafting, isn't it? Or have they changed it? No, it's under crafting. So it just caught me out. It, it was changed recently. Two, one. Yeah, okay. Let's have a quick look here. So nobody's particularly good at it, but who's the least busy? I'd say probably Ilarion is probably the least busy. So even though his crafting is poor, the others aren't really much better. So we can actually increase that. So he's like our number one crafter and he should learn and start to get better in it anyway. Again, the big problem here uh, with the stone cutting area is that we don't have a stool and we need a lamp for him to work. Like so you notice that the lamp will get power from this power grid here. OK, the last thing we need to do is put wooden floors into these bedrooms so they don't get a debuff from having a lousy bedroom. So you'll see now that he's putting a roof on his own, own bedroom where we can see here it now says indoors over here in the, in the right hand corner. So that bedroom is now totally secure and it's all sorted. Lights on, going to build the, uh, the stool, unless we haven't got any wood left. It looks like we don't have any wood left, okay, so just set up a few more bits of wood. Uh, like, like so. Now you'll see that um, Ilarin is cracking straight on with the stone cutting and he's already created some blocks. So we've got 40 blocks of marble. And we've got three blocks of limestone. Um, and it shows the blocks up here. So we know what we've got to work with. How's the bedroom getting on? So, yep, so we're cracking on with this. So we're mining in. We're getting metal at the same time. And that metal is being stored here, which is pretty sweet. So the other thing we don't want to do, we don't want to leave uh, perishable stuff outside. So, again, we want to put it in a storeroom. I, I believe I, I covered that yesterday. Um, so the thing that we need to do now is to create a, uh, a storeroom for these goods. So I think this is probably a good spot to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mine out this area and then we'll use this area as a storeroom. And then we can expand if we need to. We can expand our our uh, sleeping quarters upwards like here. I'm trying to avoid going over to here uh, for reasons explained yesterday. There's ancient dangers and stuff. So we want to try and avoid that if we can. Right, I think um, I've been going long enough. I forgot to time this video, but I think it's around 30 minutes or so. Um, so I think we've packed a lot into this episode and I hope it's been relatively useful. 
Again, I'm, I'm not showing anything too advanced here, and I'm just trying to come uh, talk about things as I come across them and start to build up a sustainable colony. So, so far, so good. We've not had a proper raid yet. We've had a tortoise attack. But when the first raid comes, it's generally one guy uh, or one girl who's a bit of a chancer um, and can be dealt with relatively easily, as you'd expect at this early stage. So hopefully we'll get one of those in the next episode. Um, but for now, thank you for watching. If you uh, liked it, please give a like or leave a comment. Um, again, if you want to see anything that I'm not covering or you think I've forgotten to mention, please do tell me. It's, it's, all, uh, it's very helpful for me um, to, to re sort of refine my technique and also helpful for other people who are watching who may benefit from that. So take care and I'll catch you on the next one.